F1 News, Lewis Hamilton reveals what relationship with Fernando Alonso is really like Alonso was Hamilton's first teammate at motorsports elite level after the Brit joined McLaren for the 2007 season. But they only lasted a year alongside one another with Alonso returning to Renault just 12 months later. Has previously admitted having the 37-year-old on the same team was one of the toughest experiences of his career due to his driving prowess. However, it seems all was well behind the scenes with Hamilton paying tribute to Alonso after he brought the curtain down on his time in F1 in Abu Dhabi two weeks ago. Fernando is a true legend, Hamilton told. It's been a real honor and a privilege to race in a period of time where he has been racing. Before I even got to Formula One I was already watching him and admiring what he had achieved. I was asked all weekend, will you miss him? And naturally I don't really quite feel like I miss another driver ever. But the sport will miss him, we will miss him and I will definitely miss him being in the sport. I don't think we ever necessarily had an issue between us, except we were trying to beat each other and murder each other's laps on the track. Outside, we used to play in BA 2K, or whatever it was together, every now and then. It was always really quite harmonious outside. Is now said to pursue Indianapolis 500 glory as he seeks to become only the second man to win the triple crown of motor sport. Hamilton hopes the Spaniard will continue to spend time in the paddock though. I definitely think naturally, we're older, old men now and the respect between us, I'd like to think, is higher than it's ever been and I don't think that's ever going to change, and I do hope that Fernando's at least around, or at least I get to see him in the future, as someone I've always respected highly as a driver. Hamilton added. Hamilton's Mercedes teammate Valtteri Bottas paid tribute to the departing Alonso too. Obviously he had a pretty eventful career, with different teams, but the main thing for me was, as a kid, watching him win his championships and he was kind of a legend at that time, Bottas said. Now I've been racing with him for a while, he's always a tough guy to race with. A little bit less in the last two years because of the big difference in the performance of our cars, but he's a racer, he loves racing and I'm sure he'll carry on driving. He had a big, long career in Formula 1, achieved a lot, even though that was a while ago, but I have huge respect for his skills and he has the same passion as all of us racing. Next news Bottas wingman role had negative impact. Mercedes boss Toto Wolff has conceded that Vault 3 Bottas wingman role at the Silver Arrows had a negative impact in 2018. An unfortunate start to the 2018 campaign slowly but surely led to the Finn becoming the supporting driver to the main act Lewis Hamilton. Bottas was told not to fight Hamilton for victory at the German Grand Prix and his bit part role within Mercedes was well and truly highlighted when told to give up his race win in Russia to let Hamilton through. Whilst Hamilton went on to clinch a fifth world title, Bottas became the first Mercedes driver since 2012 to go the entire season without winning a race. Wolf sympathizes with Bottas, and the psychological blows he had to take. I think he performed at a higher level in the first half of the season and that is reflected by the points, said Wolf. He would have been leading the championship after Baku. The moment you take away the ability to win the championship for a driver that is so focused on becoming a world champion, if he is in a Mercedes, that has a negative impact. It has also impacted Vault 3 even though he says no, I'm fine. This is a fighter and I'm sure that this is a big blow that you have to mentally digest. He has not let this negatively affect the team. But I think he needs some time off now to recharge the batteries and come back again for another championship next year. 
Next news 5 things to look forward to in F1 and 2019. Could 2019 be a banner year for F1? Jenny Gao picks out why she thinks Sola Clerk vs Vettel everyone I speak to has bought a ticket, got the t-shirt and has climbed aboard the hype train for one Mr Charles Leclerc. His step up to Ferrari after just one year in Formula 1 is the most tantalizing driver move for years. Max Verstappen's 2016 promotion into the Red Bull team from Toro Rosso was fairly feisty but it came with baggage many people were thinking Max was too young and others were thinking it was unfair on Daniel Kvet being so publicly demoted. Leclerc's is a move that seems pure and wholesome in the stuff of racing legend. Let's hope that Charles can live up to the expectation. He is a gifted driver and one of the youngest ever to take a Ferrari seat come Melbourne, he will be 21 years and 153 days old, with only Mexican Ricardo Rodriguez younger on Ferrari's list of Grand Prix drivers. The big question, though is what will the dynamic be like between him and four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel? It'll go one of two ways, either Vettel will implode and his season will be over, psychologically, before it has even begun if the young gun comes in and immediately gets to terms with the team. Or, and I think this one is more likely, Vettel will raise his game with the young Leclerc biting at his ankles. It will be a fascinating battle and my money is on Ferrari winning the constructors title for the first time in since 2008, when Rakanen and Massa clinched the title for the Italian mark. Red Bull's resurgence from Honda's ugly divorce with McLaren blossomed a beautiful new love affair with Toro Rosso. Given the freedom to play around with the engine, Honda has now found some extra horsepower and a little more reliability. When that is mixed with the Red Bull package for 2019 it could be something special. Red Bull has claimed for some time that if it had the engine performance of either Ferrari or Mercedes it would be winning everything. So it's time to see what Honda can give the team and what Red Bull can actually do with it. Max Verstappen is obviously the key ingredient to a title challenge. He refined his style during 2018 and in 2019, and now with Pierre Gasly set to rattle his cage slightly, Max will mature and go for win after a win from the start of the season not just the last half of the year. New regulations New regulations will see a simplified front wing introduced, which it is hoped will create better racing. For the last few years drivers have complained that they can't get close enough to the car in front to be able to try and overtake because of the large amounts of wake generated by the current cars. Yet, this season there have been some cracking overtakes so the prospect of even better racing with more genuine overtakes is something to get excited about. Williams bounces back? Williams scored just 7 points in 2018 a stark contrast to its championship-winning years of the 80s and 90s. However, 2019 will herald a new era. Mercedes Young Britain and Formula 2 champion George Russell will make his F1 debut with the team, having impressed with a PowerPoint presentation on why he was the right man for the Oxfordshire team. Alongside him will be Robert Kubica, the Grand Prix winner who survived a terrible rally accident in Andorra in 2011. He may have limitations with his right arm after the accident, but he has worked incredibly hard to fight for a place back in F1. It is a fairy tale, one of the greatest sporting comebacks of all time, and a real mark of the man. The question is, when it comes to a grueling race weekend and the pressure is on. Will Kubica have not only the strength of mind to succeed but also the body? Before his accident, many said he had as much natural talent and ability as Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton. Hopefully both men can help turn around Williams' fortunes, a team I believe deserved to get more than 7 points from their efforts in 2018.
the Brit pack from a British perspective, this is one of the most exciting things about 2019. Last year saw only one man born in the UK competing F1 Lewis Hamilton. And he did okay and but for 2019 there will be three Brits lining up on the grid for the first time since Monica 2017. Then Julian Palmer and the moonlighting Jensen Button started the race, but while that was the only time that year it will be a regular feature in 2019. As Hamilton returns to try and win his sixth driver's title, he will be joined on the grid by George Russell and Lando Norris. The youngster from Bristol, only just turned 19, has been third driver at McLaren and watching and learning from the great Fernando Alonso. While Norris and Russell will struggle to make an impact with teams who are not at the sharp end of the field, both drivers have tremendous potential and are really exciting prospects for the future. Their graduation also shows what great health the British motor racing scene is in. But it is with great sadness that 2019 will be the first year that fans can't see Live F1 racing on British free-to-air TV. Yes. Silverstone's final British Grand Prix will be shown on Channel 4, and there will be highlights of every race shown on TV, but it seems to be end of the road for the UK's casual F1 viewer and for the young child who stumbles across a race on a Sunday afternoon and starts a lifelong love affair with the sport. Just like I did. Live radio coverage will remain on the BBC, bringing you every session in race live, and hopefully fans join us along the way. But you have to feel for those who loved to sit down and watch F1 but don't have the cash or the inclination to pay for Sky. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to share and subscribe to your channel to get the latest sports news around the world. Wished health and success.